Hello everyone, this is Urvashi Chahan and you are watching Quotes Today by Live Law, your one-step destination to all legal developments in the country. Let us start. Starting with an update from the Supreme Court, which today restored the bail granted to YouTuber A. Durai Murugan Satai in a case where he was accused of making derogatory remarks against Tamil Nadu Chief Minister M. K. Stalin. The bench of justices Abhay S. Oak and Ujjal Bhuya was hearing Satai's challenge to a Madras High Court order which had cancelled his bail, observing that within a few days of giving an undertaking before the court, he had indulged in further offence and made derogatory remarks against the Tamil Nadu Chief Minister. Today, Justice Oak remarked and I quote, if before elections we start putting behind bars everyone who makes allegations on YouTube, imagine how many will be jailed. Senior advocate Mukul Rohatagi appearing for the state drew the court's attention to two FIRs registered against Satai in December 2022 and March 2023, alleging participation in a protest condemning demolition of Babri Masjid and demanding release of certain persons in custody. But the court was not convinced. It restored the bail order, stating that protesting and expressing views did not constitute misuse of the liberty granted and the reasons mentioned could not justify cancelling of the bail. The Supreme Court today stayed the trial against Tamil Nadu Rural Development Minister Peria Sami in a corruption case. The allegation against him is that while serving as the Minister for Housing in the DMK cabinet between the years 2008 and 2009, he conspired with others to illegally obtain a high income group plot in a scheme of Tamil Nadu Housing Board. The land was allotted to C. Ganeshan, the personal security officer of the then Chief Minister M. Karunanidhi. Though the trial court had discharged the minister, the High Court's single judge bench of Justice Anand Venkatesh through suo motor revision had set aside the trial court order. Apart from this, the High Court also ordered the trial to be transferred from the Special Court for Cases under the Prevention of Corruption Act to the Special Court for the Trial of Cases against MPs and MLAs. Let me tell you, Peria Sami's case was among several suo motor cases of corruption taken up by Justice Venkatesh. Today, the bench comprising Justices Rishikesh Roy and Prashant Kumar Mishra heard Peria Sami's plea challenging the High Court's order which had set aside his discharge. The Supreme Court categorically directed for the stay of the trial until the next date of hearing. The court reasoned that it was examining the merit of the impugned judgment and thus the trial as ordered by the trial court should not proceed. The Supreme Court has admitted the appeal filed by former Mumbai Police and Counter Specialist Pradeep Sharma challenging the recent Bombay High Court's order sentencing him to life imprisonment in a fake encounter killing case. The court also issued notice to the state of Maharashtra on his plea. Apart from this, the bench of justices Rishikesh Roy and Prashant Kumar Mishra granted him interim relief by exempting him from surrender until the next date of hearing. The High Court, as per its judgment dated 19th March this year, had directed him to surrender in three weeks. The case relates to the killing of Lakhan Bhaiya, an alleged former aide of gangster Chota Rajan. The Supreme Court has today agreed to hear a plea seeking voting facilities in the upcoming elections for 18,000 internally displaced persons or the IDPs in the light of the ongoing Manipur crisis. The counsel for the petitioner mentioned the matter before the bench headed by Chief Justice of India D.Y. Chandra Chood that 18,000 IDPs wanted to cast their votes in the upcoming general elections. It was further submitted that the Election Commission of India rules permit voting of the IDPs who are within the state. Last month, ECI announced that the general elections in Manipur will take place in four-phased manner. CGI D.Y. Chandra Chood today assured of an early hearing in this matter. Let me tell you, the people of Manipur will be voting for two Lok Sabha seats. A Delhi court today denied interim bail to BRS leader K. Kavita, who has been arrested by the Enforcement Directorate in the money laundering case connected with the alleged liquor policy scam. Special CBI Judge Kaveri Baveja today dismissed Kavita's interim bail plea and said that prima facie she is actively involved in alleged money laundering offence, destruction of evidence and attempting to influence witnesses. And now coming to an update regarding the bail condition of sharing Google PIN by the accused. 
Many a times, this condition is imposed that while on bail, the accused has to share his Google PIN with the investigating officer, thus allowing the law enforcement authorities to monitor his activities. This can help ensure that the accused is not engaging in activities that violate the terms of their bail, such as contacting witnesses or engaging in illegal behavior. In this regard, the Supreme Court is considering an important question, that is whether sharing of Google PIN with investigating officer violates a person's right to privacy. The bench of Justices Abhay S. Oak and Ujjal Bhuya heard the matter today. The bench was informed that the appropriate authority to explain the working of Google PIN would be Google LLC and not Google India, as the product is manufactured by Google LLC. Taking note of this, the bench issued formal notice to Google LLC and discharged Google India. It further directed the registry to take on record Google LLC's affidavit. In another update, the Supreme Court today issued notice in a public interest litigation raising the need for central legislation recognizing rights of intersex children and persons. The PIL sought directions to curb sex reassignment surgeries performed on intersex children before they attain the age of majority. Let me tell you here, an intersex individual is born with a combination of male and female biological traits, and the person's sex assigned at birth does not fit within the definite social categories of male and female. The PIL concerns the lack of recognition of the rights of intersex persons with special emphasis on intersex children. The petitioner highlights that such children face discrimination from the point of their birth as there is no option to register their birth and death details on the online government registration applications. The census also excludes their representation and they are not recognized as voters. A key concern raised by the petitioner was that sex determination surgeries are being performed with the consent of parents of such infants in several states. It is only the state of Tamil Nadu that such surgeries have been banned by the Madras High Court until the child attains the age of giving informed consent. The bench comprising CJ Chandrachur and Justices J.B. Pardewala and Manoj Mishra has issued notice in the petition today. And now let me tell you, the Supreme Court has stayed order passed by the division bench of Karnataka High Court allowing board exams for students of 5th, 8th, 9th and 11th standard of the schools affiliated to the state board. Last year in October, the Karnataka government had issued two notifications appointing the Karnataka School Examination and Assessment Board as the competent authority to conduct summative assessment to exams for students in classes 5, 8 and 9 as well as the annual examination for class 11 students in government aided and unaided schools and colleges following the Karnataka State Board syllabus. This decision faced opposition in the Karnataka High Court where a single judge nullified the government notifications. However, upon the state's appeal to a division bench, the single judge's ruling was stayed. In response, organizations representing private schools and parents filed special leave petitions before the Supreme Court challenging the division bench's order. The counsel representing the petitioners reminded the bench today that the Supreme Court had previously made preliminary observations against conducting board exams for these classes. Additionally, they stated that Karnataka State Quality Assessment and Accreditation Council issued a directive on the evening of 4th April this year instructing all schools to release results before 9 a.m. on 8th April, that is today, allegedly to avoid Supreme Court's intervention. The bench of Justices Bela Trivedi and Pankaj Mithil called it a classic instance where the state government of Karnataka has tried to create havoc and great distress not only to the students and their parents but also to teachers and school management. The bench observed that the High Court's order prima facie did not appear to be in consonance with the Right of Children to Free and Compulsory Education Act or Right to Education Act 2009. The Supreme Court today refused to entertain Aam Aadmi Party MP Sanjay Singh's plea against summons issued to him in a defamation case over remarks on Prime Minister Modi's academic degree. As you know, a defamation case was filed by Gujarat University against Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal as well as Sanjay Singh in connection with the remarks made by them against PM Narendra Modi's academic degree. 
The complaint filed through Gujarat University's registrar accused them of making sarcastic and defamatory statements in press conferences and on Twitter handles targeting the university over PM's degree. Last year, summons were issued to them to appear before a magistrate court in Ahmedabad. Against the summoning order, they moved the sessions court whilst also praying for stay of the trial pending disposal of their revision plea. This plea for stay was rejected. They approached the Gujarat High Court against the summons as well as the Sessions Court order affirming the summons. In October last year, the High Court issued notice to the other side but refused to stay the trial. Kejriwal approached the Supreme Court against this order but his plea was rejected on the basis that the High Court was seized of the matter. When Sanjay Singh approached the Supreme Court seeking transfer of the trial outside the state of Gujarat, the prayer was denied. Further, in February, while the impugned order, the Gujarat High Court dismissed the pleas filed by Kejriwal and Singh against the Sessions Court order affirming the summons. Against the High Court's decision, the present proceedings were initiated. Let me tell you, today the bench of Justices B.R. Gawai and Sandeep Mehta Hearing Singh's challenge said that the High Court had already observed that all contentions available to the parties are kept open and that the trial judge would not be influenced by any of the observations made in the impugned order. And lastly, the bench of justices B.R. Gawai and Sandeep Mehta today heard the writ petition filed by Karnataka government alleging that the centre was denying it financial assistance for drought management. During the hearing, senior advocate Kapil Sibbal, appearing for Karnataka, pressed that under law, the central government was required to take a final decision on the assistance to the state from the NDRF within a month of the receipt of interministerial central team. However, that period had already expired in December last year. He also pointed out that election commission was sought to be made a party. The bench, though initially inclined to issue formal notice to the union, gave time to Advocate General R. Venkata Ramani and S. G. Tushar Mehta to obtain instructions and make a statement. The matter has been posted after two weeks now. The court also commented that it had been witnessing several instances where various states were approaching it seeking relief in different matters. Thank you for watching. If you wish to know more details about the cases I mentioned here, you can visit our website at www.livelaw.in. Stay ahead with quick legal updates only on Live Law. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe and support us. You can also support us by donating through the thanks button at the bottom of our videos or consider becoming a member at just 89 rupees per month.